first reading is from Genesis 1, verses 1 to 15, and then we're flipping all the way to the end of Genesis and reading from Genesis 50. So if you want to follow along on the screen, Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 1. Um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault, and separated the water under the vault, from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. Oh, just one to five? Oh, okay. All good. Well, then we'll flip to Genesis 50, or you'll see it on the screens. And the last, this is five verses again. So, Genesis 50, verses 15. 20. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays, pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers their sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of God or your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to him, said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. We are now going to have a time of prayer. We believe that as we pray, we talk to God. So if you feel comfortable, uh, please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another great term. We pray that you'll be with Tim as he brings um, the beginning of Genesis um, for us. We pray that we will be able to listen and to learn a lot from your word. Amen. How good is restart. So good to be back. So good to have all of us in the, in the, one, the one room. Hey, Kick us off tonight, I want us to think, as we come into the book of Genesis, we're thinking about things, I want us to think, what do you do when life sucks? What do you do when life sucks? Because sometimes life's great, and you're swimming along, and your relationships at home are all good, and your friends are just, everything's going good, right? Your friends are, uh, are liking you, you're popular, you're hanging out well, you've got things in the future to look forward to, you're, you're healthy. Happy days, right? But you know as well as I do that there's some times where even if it's just one or two of those things that are different, they impact life. Right? Maybe things at home aren't so rosy. There's a bit of shouting and there's a bit of yelling and it's not a place where you heads want to be. Or maybe at school and you look at all your friends and they just seem to be like killing it, right? They're good and going great grades and no matter how hard you try, you, just, you don't seem to be able to cut it. Or in the sporting field, just everyone can do things that you just can't do. You get left out. You're the last one picked. Or there's something else going on in life where just life sucks a bit. What do you do when life sucks? We are working through the book of Genesis, this term. And I don't know what you know about the book of Genesis. We're about to find out what you know about the book of Genesis. I'm looking forward to that. Maybe you're here and you don't know... I think about Genesis, and you know, it's a new word for me, I don't know what we're talking about. Well, it's a book in the Bible, in just a moment we're going to hear a bit about what you guys uh, think Genesis is all about. But my guess is that there might be something you go, I can't think of how Genesis would help me when life sucks. It's interesting to think about, but how does it help me? My prayer, my hope, is that this term, we're going to see God in Genesis. And it's going to change our life. That's my hope for us. But the first thing I want to do is I want to find out what you think about the book of Genesis. So I've got um, I've got some paper plates here right now. Here's how this is going to work. This is uh, something you six to eight boys 
helped me earlier to, um, to make these paper plates. You've got different designs, um, different levels of aerodynamic ability. Uh, I can't guarantee that they'll all fly, but the boys have done a great job, okay? Now, here's, here's what's going to happen. I'm asking you, uh, can I get a handheld mic, actually, um, brought to me? <laughs> That'd be great. Um, I'm going to um, ask you to stick up your hand if you can tell me something about the book of Genesis, all right? And if I go, yep, yeah, that's correct, I'm going to come to you with this box, you're going to grab a paper plane, you're going to grab a text, you're going to write your thing on, and then I'm going to tell you where to throw it, all right? So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to stop. All right. That's good. Hey, you guys, you know one of the things I love about this, this crew here that we have for the youth in the West is that you're a very knowledgeable crew, all right? Random book of the Bible, you're like, yeah, I can tell you all about that, which is cool. Uh, maybe you're here and you're like, all right, the first thing about Genesis. That's all right. That's why we're here this term, to learn all about it. But this is good stuff, okay? I want to suggest to you that the book of Genesis tells us the story of God, but man, but God. What? Okay, I'll say it again. The book of Genesis tells us the story of God, but man, but God. What? Okay, I think it's because you don't, maybe you just don't quite get it. Repeat it back to me, okay? The book of Genesis tells the story of... God, but man, but God. Okay, God, but man, but God. That's straightforward, right? Okay, alright. Maybe it requires a little bit of explanation. Let's go forward, alright? The book of Genesis tells the story of... God, but people. There's, this is our little slide for God, okay? We're going to come to the line a bit. God, but man, right? You see, we need a different slide from there. That's going to be the slide from there, all right? All through this term, we're going to be thinking about these things. God, but man, but God, okay? These slides are going to help us think about how the book of Genesis tells us the story of God, but man, but God, all right? And for the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to take you through that little process, all right? So, the book of Genesis tells us the story of... What, what, what does it tell us the story of? God. 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 Very good. Okay, here's our slide for God. Whenever you think, whenever you think through this term about... Well, when you see this slide, I want you to think about how God did things in the first place, alright, how things started off. So the paper plans we threw over to this side, that was about like God created, right, it's all about the beginning, it's all about how God started, He kicked things off, right, this is how the book of Genesis starts, it starts with, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Here's what it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So there in the beginning, God sort of, he's done like baseline creation and then it's time to sort of sit in there waiting for him to, to take the next place. And it's just there and it's darkness. Now, I don't know if you've ever sat in a room that's like really dark. Like presumably when you go to sleep at night, it's pretty dark, but like really dark. I like can't sort of see your face in front of you kind of dark. If you've been in that sort of darkness... You might know that darkness can be kind of scary. That darkness can almost be like suffocating. That darkness can make you unsure of what's around you. You don't know where to step. You don't know where to go. That's what things are like. A few years ago, uh, it was about uh, six years ago, I lived with my brother uh, in a house in Castle Hill, just the two of us. Um, and it wouldn't have won awards for the cleanest house in the hills, right? It was one of those places where like, the dishes would pile up, the bin would overflow, there'd be a funny smell somewhere, and it'd be like, look, let's just leave that, to that part of the house, and hang over here for a bit. Um, yeah, there's a kind of place, like, if you, if you drop something, it might take you, you know, a couple of hours or days or weeks to clean it up, and that kind of thing, and, um, and me and my brother were a bit clumsy, and so, it, you know, it was that kind of a place, right? Anyway, I woke up one morning at about 4 a.m., uh, not because my alarm went off, but just because I had a dry mouth. You ever had a dry mouth, wake up in the middle of the night, and you're like, I just need something to moisten my tongue, right? I need something to just give my taste buds a little bit of a kick, and, but I'm really like, 
sort of half asleep. You know, you went, yeah, like, like you sort of just sort of woken up and you're like, whoa, like this is, wow, I don't know what's going on, right? Everything moves in slow motion. But I, I knew enough to say, okay, dry mouth, I need a Coke, right? That was the extent of my thinking. And so I went from my bedroom to the kitchen and I opened up the fridge and I'm like, oh, right, here you go. Like, where's, where's, the, okay, there's, and I've been there for three or four seconds, right? And this is how slow my brain was working because it took that long for the message to get up to my brain to say, there's some kind of a weird feeling at the big toe. Right? And so my brain computed that for a bit, and it was like, oh, okay, eyes, just just check this out for us, okay? So another couple of seconds, and my eyes were like, oh, okay, right? And my eyes looked down, and they saw this sort of like growing pool of blood under my foot, right? And... So the eyes reported back to my brain, they're like, look, we don't know what's going on, but it's probably not ideal. There's about as much as we can compute at this hour of the morning. And so I went to the bathroom and I lifted up my foot and there was a little bit of ceramic bowl hanging out from the bottom of my big toe, right? Because my brother had dropped this bowl the night before and clearly hadn't cleaned it as he ought to have, right? And... Um, now, because we were two young men, we had excellent first aid resources there in the go. So I got some toilet paper uh, and some duct tape and made a makeshift bandage and, and went back to bed. Um, but why did I step? Why did I step on that piece of ceramic bowl? Because I was in the dark, right? I couldn't see where I was going. I didn't know what was going on. And in the darkness, there's things that we can we'll be worried about. There are threats in our path that we just can't see. Darkness is a place of chaos. Darkness is a place of worry. Darkness is a place where actually we're not going to be all that safe. And darkness is what's there in verse 2. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters until... And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And so God, at the beginning of Genesis, comes and he speaks light into darkness. He brings good from worry. He brings order into chaos. He brings the way things should be from the way things shouldn't be. And so when we, when we say that the book of Genesis tells us the story of God. God. They start off good. Because the book of Genesis begins with the story of how God creates things good. And throughout the book, throughout uh, chapter 1, we see that he creates animals and he creates fish and he creates plants and he creates all that he needs to create. And then on the sixth day, he creates men and women in his image. And it is very good, because God is a very good God. He is a creator who is good. He's a creator who makes a creation that is good. He's a God that we can trust. And that's what we see when we think of God. When you see this slide, this term, we're going to be thinking, that's how it started off. God is there and he's good. The light separates Land from sea, light into darkness, order from chaos. And I want you to know that the God of Genesis is a God who can be trusted. We're going to see that again and again this term. And when you see this slide, I want us to think, we start off good. What comes next though? The book of Genesis tells us the story of God, God, God. But man, but man is where we go to next. You see, it doesn't take long for things to stuff up in God's good creation. And this is kind of, I saw this before with the boys, oh, sorry, with uh, the group that was over this side. There was, I think it was some of the, uh, I wasn't there the whole time, but I think it was some of the older girls who started on the, uh, the marshmallow and uh, spaghetti bridge. And it started off real good, right? 
And then the boys came along, and marshmallows got eaten, and we didn't eat bridge work got destroyed, and it ended up as just crumbs on the ground, right? We were growing up. Genesis tells us the story of man stuffing up what is good from God. Now, not man as in the male of the species, but men and girls, I hate to say it, but you're just as much at fault as the guys are. Genesis tells the story of God, but man, what does mankind do? Well, I've got some verses for you to run through, okay? Chapter 3, verse 6. God had said, so this God, the God who can be trusted, the God who is good, who created things, who created people to be with him, to be satisfied with him. It was a good creation. That's how it started off. And he said to men and women, he said, you can do anything you want. Just trust me. I'm good, right? You can, you can trust me. There's a tree. Leave it alone. 3, verse 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, she all, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her. And he ate it. And so God, but man, right? We stuff these things up. We rebel against our creator. We start going our own way and doing what we think is good. Adam and Eve had children. Do you think they're any better? Here's uh, chapter 4, verse 8. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. That was what Molly told us about before. Well done, Molly, but bad news Cain. <laughs> Right? God, but man, we stuff these things up. Next one. Noah, he's a good guy, right? Okay, here we go. Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. Noah, a man of the soil, this is after God has proven his faithfulness through um, saving them from the flood. Right? Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Right, he gets smashed on like the first night and lies there naked. What are you doing, Noah? God, but man. Right, the story of Genesis is that we stuff this up again and again and again. Chapter 11, verse 4. Then they said, this is like everyone, come let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. There's the good God. Of Genesis 1 and 2, who can be trusted. He made a good creation, who things were going well. But man, they work together to make a name for themselves and turn their back onto God, who created them. Abraham stuffs up. Isaac stuffs up. Jacob stuffs up. Joseph stuffs up. Let me tell you about Joseph's brothers, right? And this gives us an insight into how deeply sin infects us. It's like a disease that gets in our skin, right? It's this like dark water, right? It's like we're going back to the darkness that God freed us from when he spoke light into it. Joseph's brothers basically had sold him as a slave, right? Now, I know some of you are thinking, I've got a younger brother. I would very happily sell him as a slave. I right? just get him out of the house, right? But you'd feel a bit guilty if you did it. Right? And you might, you might just say, well, you might just find yourself in a situation like this. Right? Verse 15 of Genesis 50. We're going to get there. Listen up. There we are. Fantastic. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So far, that's pretty reasonable, right? Maybe they're going to come to their sense and they're just going to go and say, look, look, we've done the wrong thing, okay? Um, but, what does it say? So they, sent, uh, so, they sent word to Joseph saying, uh, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Right? Now, please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. 
You see what's happened there? There's the brothers, right? Their dad, who's now dead, he wasn't involved with their actions in selling their brother as a slave. But now he's out of the picture. They're like, okay, we're in a bit of a pickle. Let's come up with a lie, this grand scheme that dad actually said this. That might make Jacob, sort of Joseph, feel guilty and maybe he'll have to sort of forgive us because they, they kind of need his favour in this moment. You see, sin just gets inside your bones and it gets, it's like this virus that infects you. And it changes you. And I wonder if you sitting here tonight know how deeply sin infects you. And there's that teacher at school that you always sort of like bag out behind her back. Why do you do that? Because sin has gotten inside of us and it produces in us that kind of slander. Right? Or our parents are at home and we just sort of lash out, right? And we rebel against what they want us to do. Why do we do that? Because sin has infected us. Why are we lazy? Why are we proud? Why are we selfish? Why are our eyes just full of lust? Because sin has infected us like a virus. Why maybe do you sit here and go, actually, I'm pretty good. None of those things are true for me. Because sin has infected you to such a degree that you're blind to it. And the Bible begins with a book called Genesis that tells the story of God but man. And our sin is a huge problem. It's like a virus that has infected us and turns us against our good creator. The good creator who we could trust. The good creator who wanted good things for us but we've ended up in this dark, stormy sea of our sin. God but man. But Genesis tells the story of God, but God. Okay, we end up with, but God. And this is good news for us. Okay, because here is the moment where God shines through. We see, we see in this, God is not defeated by our actions. Right? It begins with God, good, light into darkness, right? But then, man, we sort of bring in our own darkness, right? That's bad news, okay? Now, we might think, well, that's the end of the story. But again and again through the book of Genesis, we're going to see. It tells the story of God, but man, but God. Here's the story. Here's what Joseph says to his brothers. Just after they've come up with this thing, right? You see their skin on full display. Verse 20. You intended to harm me. Okay, so Joseph isn't naive. He knows what's going on. He knows the story that they're playing. He knows, right, that they've sold him into slavery. He knows the depths of their evil. He goes, you intended to harm me. Genesis tells the story of God, but man. But God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. You see, what happens again and again in the book of Genesis is that we go from the good creation of God to man's sin. And God, in his amazing way that only God can, shines through the actions of the world, the broken and sinful actions of the world to bring about his purposes. It is God, but man, but God shines through in the end, and like a ray of light that is shining through the sea, through the stormy waters, we see God at work in the book of Genesis. And you know, we're here and we are building the next generation of revolutionary disciples. We heard Johnny and Caitlin uh, use that language before. <laughs> and the reason why we use that language is because. If you're here tonight and you have said, yep, I want to follow Jesus, and I know some of you are still working that out, that's so cool. Keep working it out. But if you're here and you said, yep, I want to follow Team Jesus, you know that the story of your life is God, but you, but Jesus. You know that your sin and your 
actions have meant that you're in rebellion against a good and holy God. But Jesus' power shines through even in your sin, so that even in your weakness, His strength is on display. Even in your darkness, His light is there for all to see. That's the story of the Christian life. It's God, but me, but Jesus. And each week this term, we're going to see that foreshadowed in the book of Genesis. And we see Genesis each week tells the story of... God, me, I'm my God. That's the story of the book of Genesis. And if you trust in Jesus, that's the story of your life. That he works despite your sin. So what do you do when life sucks? Remember... God, but man, and maybe that's the reason why life sucks a little bit. But God, you can hold on to his promises. You can trust him because he's a good creator and he will shine through in the end. Then you pray, and we're going to break up into our discussion groups to think about how we can share this message with those uh, who need to hear it uh, just as much as we do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you for the but Jesus moment where though we come to you with our sin and we come to you with our shame and we come to you as broken people who have chosen darkness instead of light, you hold out Christ to us and you say, but Jesus. And it means that our sin isn't the end of the story. It means there's hope for Joseph's brothers. It means there's hope for Adam's and Eve's. It means there's hope for us. So we pray, Father, that you would help us this term to see clearly the God but man but God story. And we pray that it truly would save our lives.